my besties, welcome to my channel. So I'm gonna look very different in this clip because apparently I lost the footage to the intro of this vlog or I deleted it accidentally, I don't really know. So I, I don't know what I did, but either way, the footage is gone. So I wanted to come back and reintroduce this, but now you know that I got my hair done, so surprise. But anyway, in this vlog, I read the last three books in the Chestnut Spring series, which was Powerless, Reckless, and Hopeless. And before I got into that, I did in the original intro, I did talk briefly about my feelings about Flawless and Heartless. So I. I ended up reading Flawless probably in February of this year, so it was quite a while ago. And then I actually read Heartless right before marathoning the rest of the series for a Patreon exclusive vlog. So I did technically marathon all four of those books within a week, but I was vlogging my experience reading Heartless in a Patreon vlog. So I actually really loved Flawless. I gave it four stars. It was my introduction into cowboy romance and I absolutely loved it. I really liked summer. I will say Rhett at this point to me is very forgettable, but something I learned while reading this entire series is that maybe male protagonists are kind of forgettable for me. <laughs> As for Heartless, Heartless is about Willa and Cade. And if you know anything about the Chestnut Spring series, all of the men in the series are related or are like best friends, practically brothers type of relationships. And most all of the women are women who have come into the picture for various reasons, all but the third book. Sloane is actually the cousin of most of the men in this book, except for the one she ends up getting with. He is not her actual cousin. So most of the women are coming into the situation of a large family, and there's a lot of found family aspects because a lot of the women end up becoming friends together, and I love that. I think Chestnut Springs is probably one of my favorite small town romance series that I've ever read, just because the found family, especially among the women, is so special to me and so heartwarming and it it was just so nice to read and it gave me all of the warm and fuzzies it's just like one of those things that you absolutely want in your life and i think that the further i read of this series the more that was solidified for me but yeah heartless was one of my favorites i really love the single dad trope so that is the trope in the second book and i do talk about this more obviously in a patreon video but i ended up loving it so starting this vlog i had started powerless and powerless is about sloan and jasper sloan is technically the cousin to all of the other men in this book who are related so i think rhett Cade, and Bo are all related by blood and then jasper he was best friends with Bo growing up and he had a very hard home life and Bo kind of ended up bringing him into the family and he's sort of the adopted brother but not like actually adopted so sloan and him in theory are cousins, but they're not. He's not really related to her. But Sloane and Jasper grew up around each other and they've kind of always held the torch for one another. And so this is a friends to lovers romance where they have known each other for years and years and years. And it's very obvious that they both are kind of in love with each other except to each other. <laughs> but Sloane is a ballerina and she has been engaged to this man that she doesn't really love, but he's kind of this connection for her father who's built up this business her father really wants them to marry and Sloane's kind of going along with it but at the very beginning of the book she ends up finding out that her fiance cheated on her the night before the wedding and she is calling off the wedding. So Sloane is obviously spending the book trying to heal from this trauma and coming to terms with what her father was kind of putting her through as well as the fact that she is realizing she wasn't in love with her fiance and her fiance obviously wasn't in love with her. Whereas Jasper he obviously has a lot of trauma from his past because of his family and his family not being there. And he ends up having to deal with the situation with Bo, which is very jarring for him because they are best friends and they are very close. Bo is in the army, so it's a very precarious situation. But one of the things that I was really loving about the book so far is that they do go on this road trip, which I kind of like a road trip vibe, especially the one bed trope. But also Elsie Silver has another series. And this other series is actually about Cade, Rhett, and Bo's sister, their little sister. And she has a romance series. The first book, I don't remember what it's called. I'll pop it up here if I can. Um, that book is about her falling in love with whoever the love interest for that is. I haven't read that series yet. But we get to meet a lot of those people in Powerless because the road trip is to the sister. And so I had a lot of fun with that and it made me excited to read this other series. I haven't heard the most amazing things about this series, but I do want to give it a shot because I really like Elsie Silver. So yeah, now we can actually go into clips that were you know, not lost and filmed 
in the correct order. <laughs> okay, a couple things. I just finished my last pottery class of the session, and so hopefully in the next session I'll be able to find a class that fits my schedule again, because I would really love to keep doing this pottery thing. We sign up in December, I'm hoping I can find another class to fit my schedule, but if not, I'll probably just go to one of the studios for a time to just like have access to things. Oh, fuck. Goose is very food driven. I don't know if I've ever said this, we found him in the garage, so he had been living on the streets for at least six to seven months before we found him, and he still has a lot of those tendencies. And I heard the crinkling of the bag, and I was like, nope, no, he's gonna try to eat it. Anyway, all I was saying was that I didn't really get any footage today in class, but I will show you a picture of what I made. I was really determined to make a mummy mug, so I coil built this mummy mug, and I finally did my undergrad glazing today so I do need to sign up for a glazing class so that once that gets kiln fired I can then glaze it and that would be my last piece. Secondly my class is at 9 a.m. so I basically just like wash my face put on my skincare and some sunscreen but I use this sunscreen that I don't really like because I usually will come home again and just like wash my face and get ready for the day. Anyway use that sunscreen and uh, I got in my car and I looked at my face and there was just like white all around my nose and like all on here. And that's why I don't like the sunscreen because it like leaves streaks of white on your face. And I was like, I'm a clown, literally. But anyway, I'm actually really here to update you because I finished Powerless and I started Reckless in Pottery. And then last night I continued reading The Hundred Year War on Palestine. I've been reading that on my Kindle. It's also on Scribd if you wanted the audiobook. I also think it's on Overdrive and Hoopla, but it's on Scribd for sure. I've been reading and listening through Scribd. So I read that before bed. You know, that's what I'm just continuing to do. I'm continuing to try to educate myself in any way that I can about Palestine. So yeah, I think that I am 20-ish percent into the Hundred Years War on Palestine. Um, it's a 10-hour audiobook and I've only been listening to it on 1.5 speed so that I can really absorb it. I'm also kind of reading and listening at the same time, but I'm pretty sure I'm only 20% into it. Script doesn't tell you the percentage that you're into something. It just tells you how many hours you have left, which is also not helpful when you're listening on a different speed. But that being said, I do have seven hours left of the audiobook. So then Powerless. I finished it. It is not my favorite so far of the three that I've read. I've read three now and it's not my favorite. Um, there's a kink in here. There's a control kink in here that wasn't for me. Individually, I like our two love interests and you know, I was interested in the story for the most part, but there was a lot of, I feel like unnecessary things, especially towards the end that I just didn't care about. Like I just cared about them being together. And I know that Sloan as a character needed closure with things regarding her dad and her ex fiance, but like, I don't know, I just didn't care by the end about any of that stuff. And it's not that I wasn't rooting for the relationship because I definitely was. I I liked them together. I think they fit well together. And I think that's something about the series that I really enjoy is that the couples tend to fit each other really well and it doesn't feel forced or unnatural. There's definitely chemistry between all of the couples so far that I've read. But this one just wasn't really my favorite. I feel like it's gonna be really forgettable for me, but you know, reading a whole series of romance books, I think. Think there has to at least be one week one right there has to be one that you don't like and i wouldn't say i didn't like this one i gave it a three i would say that maybe i would give it a 3.5 because there were moments in it that i really loved like the tattoo part if you know you know the tattoo part was just so sweet and also for somebody who is somebody being me who is pretty ambivalent about friends to lovers or like childhood friends to lovers. I didn't mind it so much in here. I think the reason that friends to lovers falls flat for me a lot of times, and maybe this is why other people feel the same way, there is so much history that they have that you are not privy to. And so it's not as fun, right? Because you're doing flashbacks to things in the past and it's like, okay. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, it's almost like a, why should I care about this? But it's like supposed to make you care about the relationship more because you're seeing that they have all this history and love between one another and like trust and they built it up over all of these years and they didn't want to ruin their friendship. And like, that is all well and good. But I feel like the most fun part for me in a romance is getting to see this couple become best friends. And so when they're already best friends, when they already have this long history, it's hard to catch up, right? So it 
just felt like Sloane and Jasper. Is that his name? That it's, it really wasn't my favorite. Yeah, Jasper. It just felt like Sloane and Jasper were together. Like they've always had this close relationship. They've always only ever trusted each other. It clearly like, when a man saves you from your own wedding, I don't, I don't see friendship in that mix. I see that man's in love with you because no one else was saving you from that wedding except this man that you've been pining for. And so you think that he's not pining for you too? That's where I get confused. Anyway, there was some self-awareness though in this book that I really enjoyed. They are like, they're not really cousins, but they're adoptive cousins in ways. And so there was a lot of cousin jokes. And at one point Sloane does say, wow, you've conveniently realized that you find me attractive and like could be with me type of joke, even though that's not really the case between the two of them. They've always been pining for each other. So that was a little bit different, but she does make that joke. So there is a level of self-awareness. So I enjoyed that. I don't know, this one was fairly forgettable for me. I didn't really attach to the characters. And the way that I have with the other two, that I've read and I think the overarching like conflict in here didn't speak to me it didn't really do anything for me so yeah it's like a 3 3.5 and then I started reckless I'm not actually sure how far I am into this book I would say that I'm probably 40% into the book already I am obsessed I could say right now that Heartless or Reckless will probably be my top two. I don't know which would be my favorite because I love Willa so much, but now I love Winter so much. They are definitely my two favorite female protagonists of the series so far. And I never thought that I would be saying this because as someone who doesn't want kids and as someone who doesn't want a surprise pregnancy in any capacity, I find that this series changes my whole opinion on that. Like, I don't want that in my life, but in this series, there's a lot of like pregnancies, there's a lot of single dads or single parent tropes happening, and I love it. <laughs> so yeah, Reckless, this is about Theo and Winter. Winter is Summer's sister, and if you read the first book, you will know that Summer and Winter don't have the best relationship and the circumstances surrounding their relationship is very complex. And so therefore it's made their relationship very complex. And at this point, Winter is kind of coming back into the picture. She's going through a divorce and a career change and she's trying to deal with the repercussions of that when she has a one night stand with Theo. And then things get really complicated between them. And Theo is a bull rider and he is just at the top of his career. He's at a point where he he's really making a name for himself and he's doing amazingly. When him and Winter have a one night stand, they have this like real intense attraction to each other, but they clearly don't want it to have any strings attached because neither of them are really in a place to be in a serious relationship. And then, like I said, things get complicated and they're kind of running into each other a lot. And I love it. Winter is so relatable for me and I love her. I love her so much. And Theo is just like the standard of man. I don't say that a lot about men, but Theo, the standard. <laughs> I'm very, very much enjoying this one. And I'm like, I need to slow down with reading it because I'm loving it so much. But I also constantly just want to be in the story and see where it goes. You know, I want them to fall in love. <laughs> just living, laughing, loving the Chestnut Spring series. So I finished Reckless this morning because at night I've been reading the Hundred Year War on Palestine. I don't remember where I was at like percentage wise last time when I updated you about the Hundred Year War on Palestine, but now I'm definitely 50% through and I, it's hard to say that you're liking something, but it is well written. It's easily digestible in terms of the content, I understand it, and it's helping me have a better grasp on things. This whole thing is very nuanced, so I feel that things will always be going over my head. I will always be learning about this topic. So 
despite it being digestible, I'm, I'm always gonna be learning. I will say that I'm not the expert, but I do think it's a good book to start with because it breaks things down in a way, like I said, where it's easy to understand. But this morning I finished Reckless by Elsie Silver, which is the fourth Chestnut Spring book. This one, which you already know because I did do an update, is about Theo and Winter, and Winter is Summer's sister, who is the female love interest in the first book, Flawless. And let me tell you, Winter and Theo are just wonderful. Winter is my baby. I think Winter and Willa hands down have to be my two favorite female protagonists. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah, those two women just hold a very special place in my heart. I really, really love a feisty and sarcastic female main character. Not that I'm feisty, but I'm very sarcastic. So I see a lot of myself in these characters. And I just love how flawed they are and like they know they're flawed and they're not afraid to admit that. I'm also shocked that these two are my favorite because these two heavily deal with parenthood and I don't really want to be a parent but for whatever reason I do enjoy reading about parenthood I do enjoy when people enjoy parenthood because I think that's a very important part of being a parent <laughs> you know is enjoying the process wanting kids enjoying raising your children like there's no doubt that even if you don't want kids you could probably love a child if you accidentally had a child or whatever the case is but there's something just very special about people who automatically know that they want to be parents and know that they will be good parents or you know the best that they can be with whatever they have and so it's it is very enjoyable to read books where people enjoy being parents want to be parents like strive to be really great parents and it reads that way as well they love being a family unit i really enjoy reading that do i want that no but i enjoy reading it <laughs> I love to root for two people being in love. Anyway, all I'm saying is Reckless is like a 4.5 for me. It's probably my favorite of the ones that I've read so far. I don't know. I go back and forth between Heartless and Reckless. Those two are kind of neck and neck for me, especially because of Willa and Winter. But I mean, Cade and Theo are also really great protagonists as well. I think the other thing I love about this series so much is how connected everybody is because you get to see everyone all the time and you get to see their dynamics and their friendships and their relationships as brothers and sisters-in-law and et cetera, et cetera. And I just really enjoy this dynamic. But you know who the star of the show is? Harvey, the dad. And I just need him to have his love story, okay? His wife died years ago and I just need him to be in love with someone again. But yeah, yeah, Reckless, what a great time. What a fun time. Like it had me very emotional the majority of the book, especially because Winter is going through this healing journey and the way that Theo reacts to certain circumstances that they're kind of placed in as a couple, like the way he reacts to things. It was just so, it was so heartbreaking at times and so heartwarming at other times. And then Winter, you know, going through her whole healing journey and trying to prove to people that she's not this ice queen that everybody calls her. And there are reasons that she carries herself in such a cold and dismissive way and it's not because she really is that person it's because she's had to protect herself her whole life for various reasons that we learn about and I just love her you know she just wants to be loved and she wants to love and she just doesn't know how she doesn't know how to let love in and she doesn't know how to give her love okay and I just love winter and I'm very happy <laughs> that she found Theo. <laughs> I did just start uh, Hopeless. This one's called Hopeless. This one is Bo's love story. He is the youngest brother. He was in the military. There is a plot line that weaves between Powerless and Reckless where you kind of get to know Bo's story a little bit more and some of the things that he's gone through. And now we're really diving into that. So this one is really emotional because both of these characters are emotionally and mentally going through a lot. And so this one has been kind of a different tone, I feel, than the other ones. Every single one of them, they're all dealing with real life, like hardships. But this one especially is dealing with like mental trauma. And it's been, it's just been a different tone, not in a bad way, but it's just a very different tone. And I mean, that's necessary for what they're dealing with. I'm excited to see how it turns out because this one feels so different than the other ones. So yeah, I'm interested to see how this love story progresses. So far I'm enjoying it. I think I'm maybe like 10% into the book and you're really just being introduced to where this is gonna go. It's a fake dating trope, which I'm interested in. 
I'm interested to see how that goes because I do really love fake dating. Hello friends. So I'm on my way to go get my hair done. It's a new hairdresser. So I'm very nervous, but I'm very hopeful that this could be like my new hairdresser. It's been two years and I still haven't found anybody that I consistently go to. And so I'm really hoping that this is it. And we're back. I don't even know if you can really tell. Oh yeah, you can tell. It's definitely more red than I anticipated, but I actually really like it. Okay, I really like it. My new hairstylist was great. I really enjoy when a hairstylist like has a good combination of asking you questions, but also letting there be silences, you know, cause I was there for five hours. So it was great to just have moments to just read, which I did do. I've been reading Mile High and I am now like 56% into it. I'm still really ambivalent about this book. There are parts of me that really love it because I love Stevie as a character and I'm starting to like Xander more more as a character, but in the beginning, I really didn't like him. I don't love cocky athletes very much. So I was kind of struggling, but I do really love both of the characters now. And I think they have amazing chemistry. That is one thing I can't deny about this book. They have amazing chemistry. I just don't know if it's like something about the writing or what it is that's just not sucking me into the story where it feels like it's gonna be a five star read. But I definitely wanna read the second one because everyone who has asked me to read this series or told me to read this series has said that the second one is the best. And I'm actually looking forward to it because the second one is about Stevie, our female love interest in here, her brother, and I really like her brother. So I am excited to read his book and I'm hoping that one is like my five star. But this one, I think I'll give it like probably 3.5, four stars. It really depends on how it ends. But yeah, I'm only 50% in. This is supposed to be like a 600 page book. I've been reading it on my Kindle, so I'm not really sure how many pages exactly, but I think it's like 600 pages. The audiobook is like 14 hours, so. <laughs> so yeah enjoying it not a new favorite so far yeah i actually have to hop on reading sprints right now and i'm gonna order myself something to eat because i haven't eaten since like 8 a.m this morning and i've been at the salon for five hours so i'm ready to eat something so red in this light. I feel like it's more red on camera than it actually is in real life, but who even knows. I just got back from running some errands and getting lunch, and so I just wanted to show you a little tiny haul. It's nothing special. So my hairdresser recommended this color bomb. So it's a color conditioner in saffron red. 
So we were going for a coppery color. It turned out obviously more red. So she said to use this every couple of washes. I needed a new cleansing balm and I normally use the pharmacy's green clean, the papaya one. I usually use that, but I was at Target. So I ended up getting the Natrium Purple Ginseng Cleansing Balm which I love cleansing balms. I double cleanse every single night. And so I love finding more affordable cleansing balms. Although to be honest, pharmacy cleansing balm is pretty affordable for what it is and how well it works. This happens to be a little bit cheaper, but I've had really bad luck with finding cleansing balms as good as the pharmacy cleansing balm. So we'll see tonight if this actually works. I've been using their other one. It's like the gel cleansing balm. It's in an actual tube and it's fine. Um, it lasted for a really long time, but it's not my favorite thing. I don't think it gets off my makeup very well. This is nothing special. Fuck. I'm so upset I got the wrong one. Well, what I was going to tell you was that I love these Heyday chargers because they're braided chargers. And so the thing about the iPhone chargers is it always like cracks and breaks at the very top part right here for me. So these have been nice because I have two of them and they like never break. So I wanted to get another one because my one downstairs has been cracking, but I don't have a brick that has this type of charger. So I'm gonna have to return this and go get the one that actually fits. Whatever, I still stand by the fact that I love these chargers. And then we went to Barnes and Noble, as you saw, and I was looking for Iris Kelly. They didn't have it in stock, but they did have the reformatory. So I ended up getting the reformatory and I'm really excited to finally like have a finished copy of this. And I'm probably like a quarter into this right now. I was reading it in my previous vlog and I got like a quarter of the way into it and I was really enjoying it. It was just, I'm not in the headspace to read physically. It's hard for me to pay attention to things right now just because of everything in the world. Anyway, I also wanted to update because I gave you an update about Mile High, but I didn't get the chance to update you about the fact that I did finish Hopeless, which was the last book in the Chestnut Spring series. Although there is like a short story about the couple in Hopeless, their wedding that you can get on Elsie Silver's website, but I just was too lazy and I didn't go do that. So I'm not sure if I gave a synopsis of this one, but this one, one is about the youngest brother, Bo, and he was in the military and now he is not in the military anymore. And he's kind of trying to figure out his life. And then the love interest, her name is Bailey and she has a really bad reputation in town because of her family. And she works at the local bar and Bo has been drinking a lot and they kind of start this fake dating relationship. And I love fake dating, I do, but it's not always my favorite thing. Only because the fake dating doesn't feel fake. It feels real the whole time. Like they have feelings for each other immediately into it. And then like the fake dating obviously turns into real dating. So sometimes fake dating is not as satisfying simply because it doesn't ever feel like they're actually fake dating. You know what I mean? So for this one, I kind of felt that way. I kind of felt like the fake dating was never really that fake, but at the same time they had their issues like internally that was stopping them from wanting to be in a relationship with one another. And so I did like that exploration. I think the thing with Bo is that because I read most of the series back to back to back, a lot of the males in this series are similar to one another. And maybe that's because they're all like brothers and best friends. But yeah, they were very similar to one another, even like in the smut scenes, they were very similar in how they interact and what they say. So I'm not sure that I fully recommend reading these back to back to back, but it is fun and I had a really fun time. But some of it did blend together and Hopeless is probably my second to least favorite. But to say it's a second to least favorite isn't that negative of a statement because I still gave it a 3.5 stars. I really enjoyed it. I just think that if I were to come back to the series, which I could see myself doing. I probably wouldn't reread Powerless and Hopeless, but maybe I would. Maybe I would reread Hopeless to have possibly a different experience with it, only because it was like the last of five books in a series where it started to kind of blend together a little bit. That all being said, I absolutely adored the series. I absolutely adore the small town vibes of it all. I absolutely adored the found family in here, especially between the women. I think the female POVs were especially my favorite 
favorite throughout each of these books, but also the men are very funny within their relationships to one another. I think the male family friend aspect is a little bit different because all of the males in this series have known each other. Like none of them are just coming on the scene. They've all known each other by either being brothers or by being best friends. So I think it's a little bit of a different dynamic. I liked their dynamic and I really like the men in the series and I like the way that these men treat the women in the series. But I think what was fun is that like all of the women were coming into this dynamic for the most part, except for Sloan and they were forming friendships with one another and they were forming friendships with even the like brothers and best friends in different types of ways and it's very found family and they're very like if you're with my brother or whoever like you're part of the family and I especially love that with Harvey. Harvey is the dad and he's hands down one of my favorite side characters. I wish we had a book about Harvey and like all the stuff that happens with him in the end. He is just so funny and I think he brings a lot of like levity to this series. He's just such a funny character. I really, really loved him. So overall, I think this is a four star, a solid four star series for me. My ranking order is hard because I still don't know if I would put Reckless or Heartless first, but I think that I would put Heartless first only because I love Willa so much. And then Reckless is like literally right there. They're, they're neck and neck. They're almost just at the same level, but I think I'm going to do Heartless, Reckless, Flawless, Hopeless, Powerless. So yeah, I had such a fun time. I really did. I'm glad that I finally just caved and decided to read all of them back to back to back. It's been a great escapism type of series. And then as you know, I started Mile High and I'm enjoying it. I'm almost done with it. So I will give you my final update when I do finish it. As for the rest of the weekend, I have a movie night with my patrons and I think we're gonna go around and try to find all of the decorated houses within my town. We're not really doing much for Halloween. I'm mainly just spending it with my patrons and I'm gonna be honest, I'm still not in the Halloween spirit, especially everything going on with Palestine. It's like hard to want to celebrate anything or be excited about anything. Anyway, that's what we're doing. I hope that y'all had a fun and safe Halloween because this will probably be out after Halloween. You know, one thing I didn't take into consideration is my hair matching my shirt. I don't know if I like it or if I hate it. <laughs> Hello friends, it's been a while. I haven't updated in like, I'm gonna say close to five days because my current life has been such a whirlwind. So Jared and I have been talking about moving for a while. We've been talking about it for the last year. At a point in time, we were actively looking for different places and then we kind of just stopped. And now more recently, we decided again that it's time to move just for a lot of different reasons. And we signed a lease today, which is super exciting. It's a little overwhelming because we are supposed to be out of this apartment by the end of the month. And hopefully we can like get things rolling faster than that and be in the new place much faster than a month because I'm just impatient and I would really like to be in the new place rather than here. But we literally haven't packed a single thing because it all just happened so fast. That being said, I never was able to close out this vlog or talk about Mile High. I definitely finished Mile High. I ended up giving it four stars. I'm not sure that I actually gave you a synopsis of the book. So essentially we have two love interests. We have Stevie and Stevie is a flight attendant 
And she is kind of going through a healing journey within herself currently because she has very low self-esteem based on the way that other men in her life have treated her. And also because Stevie's twin brother is a professional basketball player who's very well known. Stevie has experienced a lot of people trying to get close to her to get close to her brother. So she's not very trusting of people. She's not really looking for anything with anyone relationship wise. And then you have Xanders and Xanders is a professional hockey player and he happens to be the team that flies eyes on the plane that Stevie is a flight attendant for. And he is known as a playboy. He is never photographed with the same girl twice. He's also kind of known as an asshole. <laughs> so there are many headlines of him getting in fights in the rink and outside of the rink. And Stevie is not impressed by Xanders. She obviously has like a little bit of attraction to him. You can see that in the beginning of the book, but she is very unimpressed by his behavior, by his playboy attitude. And so she doesn't really want anything to do with him. And for whatever reason, that just bothers him so much. So he is trying to make her life as hard as possible while she is their flight attendant. But the attraction grows and they form this really interesting bond that I ended up loving in the end. I have a lot of trouble with athletes who have like really bad attitudes or think that they can sleep or have anybody that they want whenever they want. I just hate characters like that. And so it wasn't working for me at first. I really was not liking Xanders. And so it was kind of ruining the book for me because I do love Stevie a lot. Every time we were in her perspective, the more we got to know her, I just really love Stevie. But Xander's just really was bothering me throughout this book. And then by the midpoint, I realized that I was growing to really like him. So I ended up giving it a four stars because of the fact that like this book totally turned around for me in my feelings about specifically Xander's and just this relationship as a whole. And the fact that Liz Homford, for whatever reason, can just pull the tears out of me. So I got very emotional at many things in this book and definitely ended up liking it more than I thought I would based on my feelings in the beginning. I just feel like these books are too long. They're like 600 pages, I think. I don't know. I was listening to the audiobook and the audiobooks are like 14 to 15 hours long. So I believe they are 500 to 600 pages. I love Mariana Zapata who also writes a 500 page romance, but there was just something about these that I felt we really focused on a lot of mundane things that didn't matter to me that much. It was a fun time, but not my favorite time, I guess. And I will say that Stevie is a character that I think is gonna stick with me. I just really liked her. And then I have not finished The Hundred Years War on Palestine because this is such a dense book. Like I feel it's a very great foundational book and I'm so glad that I'm reading it because it's really helping me solidify my understanding of the long history between Palestine and Israel. It's just been a much slower read for me, especially because I haven't actually been able to listen to many audiobooks more recently. I've had a lot of work to do and I just haven't really been in the mood for audio books. So I've been reading it physically. It's just been slow. I'm at like 70%. So I'm pretty close to being done. I do think that if you are looking for foundational books about Palestine, this one should be your go-to because I feel like even though I've read two other books about Palestine, I feel that this one has given me the best foundation. I mean, obviously I'm not going to read one book and have this profound understanding of a 400 year war, but I do think that this has given me a really solid foundation to be able to read other books and not feel lost. But yeah, I feel like this blog is pretty chaotic because it's spanning a much longer time than I anticipated, but Halloween has come and gone. November is here. I really hope that you had a great Halloween. I hope it was safe and fun. Please let me know down below if you dressed up, what you dressed up as, what you did for Halloween, if you celebrate Halloween, or if you celebrated this year. I didn't do anything, so nothing exciting on my end. Otherwise, please leave a watermelon or Palestine flag down below in the comments if you've made it this far, and I will talk to you next time. Bye, friends. Oh.